hello hello everyone hello <laughs> i can't get good at intros no matter how much i try hello okay so i am editing this right now i talked so damn much i gave myself cotton mouth this video was originally three hours long <laughs> so if you see a white line on my lips <laughs> it's because my mouth got dry as hell and there's no way in that I am redoing this. What I would recommend is just listening to this video, <laughs> but I'm not trying to see no hate comments down below saying drink some water because I don't drink water. Anyways, enjoy. Hey guys, what up? It's me, Steph. Who cares? I know. Okay, so let's just get into it. So today is going to be another talking video. I feel like I have fluff all over my face. <laughs> So today is gonna be another talking video. Um, since you guys love my nasally voice, I understand. Today I wanted to talk about how I became a makeup artist and my journey and following my dreams. I gave you guys a little tidbit. I'll put it up over here and you guys can check it out if you want. And that is get to know me and just other bullshit if you guys even care. Before I get started, I wanna let you guys know that there's a dog out there barking. I know it's sacrilege to talk about dogs this way. This motherfucker has been barking for like a good three, four hours and the, the, oh, where are you? Oh, but it pees when I'm at work. I don't care. Then do something. Okay, so if you hear that, that asshole barking, you hear him? He's barking right now. Now there's a drill. Okay, I am gonna f scream. There's a dog barking and someone drilling. I'm gonna try to edit out the background noise. We'll see how it goes. And if not, then it's gonna be like you're here with me. Okay, so let's just rewind all the way back. So in 2010, I was 19 years old and I had the fortune of developing generalized anxiety disorder and agoraphobia, which is amazing. I tell everyone I had to take a Xanax just to go to the f mailbox. Like that's how terrified I was of leaving my house. Makeup tutorials were starting to become super popular in 2009, 2010, and that's all I would watch. I would watch hours and hours and hours of freaking tutorials. I don't know why I'm stretching. I literally just opened Pandora's box of makeup and makeup tutorials and, and videos. I legit watched makeup tutorials for about three years, three years. And I was starting to be a photographer at that time, which which is so laughable now because all my photo friends are like, ew. I started falling out of love with photo because I'm a cancer and like, if I become too serious with something, I like wanna die. You know, my friends, they were like, dude, like you're so obsessed with makeup. Like you keep watching makeup tutorials. If you don't wanna do photo, then don't do photo anymore, but you keep searching for something that's already in front of you. And they're like, why don't you just try doing makeup? And I was like, oh my God, yeah. Like I never even thought about makeup being a career. So my first shoot I think was in August of 2014. If you guys don't know what test shoots are, they're basically like where you test with a photographer or a hairstylist or whoever, basically just doing free shoots. To this day, I do test shoots all the time. Don't think that because you're a working makeup artist that you're gonna do only paid things from now until forever. I would say in 2019, probably 30 or 35% of what I did were free. So you're always gonna be doing free things. I know a lot of people think that, oh my God, when you're a makeup artist, you just charge like, a hundred dollars a minute. No, it's not like that. Or some other people think that I charge $40 to do your makeup, which is another thing that we need to talk about because bitch, I would work my part-time job, save everything from that because I lived at home and everything was fine. And then I would save all that money up and waste it all and just doing test shoots and then come back home and do the same thing over and over and over again. So I saw this one makeup artist and I was like, holy shit, like that's exactly the kind of makeup that I want to be doing. Like those are the kind of photos that I want to be doing. And so I was like, okay, maybe it's just like her though. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's just like gonna be her page and then no one else, whatever. And I saw Mexico City and I was like, what the hell? Because I feel like when you're a American, you don't even think about moving to another country because it's like the Truman Show. Like everyone tells you like stay in your country, stay in your country, stay in your country. So then I opened Pandora's box yet again and I looked at the hairstylists that she worked with. And from those hairstylists, I looked at the other makeup artists that they worked with or the photographers and it's just a black hole of creativity and talent. I can't express to you guys 
enough how much talent there is here in Mexico City, how much talent there is here in Mexico, period. There are some of the most amazing hair size and makeup artists and photographers and stylists and art directors and anything. It's unbelievable. And that's exactly what I was looking for because I wanted to be surrounded. I wanted to learn from these people. You know when people say like, okay, when you want to see who you are, look who you hang or Wait, what? What's that? <laughs> What's that phrase? When you want to see who you are, look at your surroundings. I don't know, I'm butchering the shit out of this, but it was basically that. If I wanted to become that kind of makeup artist, I was gonna have to be in that environment. And I knew I wasn't gonna get that kind of growth in Chicago. And of course people say like, oh my God, just be your own pioneer. No, because I was just starting out too. Like I also wanted to be fully immersed in it and I didn't want to, you know, wait that long. And, and I wanted to learn. That was the thing. I wanted some people to look up to. I wanted an entire industry that I can be like, wow, these are my coworkers or this is who I'm assisting or you know what I mean? Like I wanted to learn. I was so hungry to learn. I'm hungry right now. So I saw Mexico City and I literally instantly got diarrhea because I knew that's where I needed to go. So what did I do? I sold my car and I moved to a different country. Now here's the kicker. I didn't know anyone in Mexico City. Anyone. And when I say anyone, I didn't know anyone. You guys, now looking back, I'm like, you're a crazy bitch and I'm scared of you. And I barely knew Spanish. I barely know Spanish now. I was living off savings. I was jumping into a creative field, which is super competitive. And on top of that, I was going freelance. It's just all the odds were against me. And I don't mean that in like a... <laughs> I'm like so strong. I meant for real guys, like I was crazy as f Okay, so what did I do when I first moved here? So tip number one is email everyone. A month before I moved here, I emailed everyone and if I couldn't find their email on their Instagram, I found their email on their website or I just messaged them on Instagram. So when I tell you to email everyone, I mean everyone. I'm sure I emailed somebody's mom too. I'm serious. I emailed every single modeling agency here. They have a huge network of photographers and people that they work with. And they know who's working. Well, that was my logic. I set up meetings with everyone. I set up test shoots with everyone. I knew I wasn't going to get a paid job for a while. And I just emailed everyone asking for a chance, you know, not begging which I'm known to do. <laughs> but yeah, saying, hi, I'm Stephanie Snyder. I'm a makeup artist from Chicago because if I said Gurney, people would be like, bitch, where? <laughs> but trust me, bitch, I'm Gurney proud. I would always try to analyze each and everyone's work. So if let's say a makeup artist had a bunch of graphic liner, I would say, I love the graphic liner that you do. If a photographer had a different kind of lighting, you know, I would say, I love the lighting that you do. I would try to find one thing and compliment them in every single email. And that's because you want to show them that you are paying attention to their work. It's not just a copy and paste message. If you're going to put in work and you want to work with someone, tell them why you want to work with them. Don't be a copy and paste bitch because there are too many of those. Hey, I'm looking to assist. Hey, I'm looking for this. But bitch, why? Why are you looking to assist? Why are you doing this? Why are you contacting that person? I think that today, especially things are so competitive that you're scared to tell someone what they're good at. You're scared to tell someone, Hey, good job with that. Hey, good job with this. And people need to hear that. People want to hear a good job. Like the only reason I say that is because I I know damn well that whenever I do any kind of makeup, even makeup that I do right now, if I hear someone tell me good job, that's such good makeup, I'm like, like a fucking puppy. Oh my God, really? You liked it? It doesn't matter how many years that I do makeup. I will always love when someone tells me good job. I will always love when someone says, hey, I love your work. I will always, I will always be that bitch. The second thing is testing. So please do not, unlike me, do not quit your job <laughs> because you are not gonna make any money from it. Whenever you test, I would say get as many tests as you can, whenever you can. And I don't know if it's just me or whatever, but anytime you test with someone, email them that night, tell them thank you for your time. It's just a rule that I have. I always email everyone or, or message everyone afterwards, even if I work with them a million times, because it's super easy to think that people know this and oh, whatever, he knows that I'm grateful, but it's like it never gets old hearing it. I just make sure to tell everyone all the positive things that I think about them. Oh, and on that note, I'm gonna say, do not gossip about people. As much as you can say thank you and whatever, if you gossip once and the wrong person hears about it, bitch, <laughs> good luck. Even if you're that bitch that says thank you after every job, just wait until your gossip comes out because it is a small industry. It is a small little circle and it's very incestual. Nothing has happened to me, thank God, but it's because I think when I'm working, I mostly just talk shit about myself <laughs> because that is my life. I like talking shit about myself. I actually did a test with one of my, <sighs> How much I love this man! 
there is this man called Dan Crosby here. He was the second photographer that I, he was the second photographer that I worked with here in Mexico City. He was the first photographer that emailed me back and I can't believe it because he is like such a big photographer. He's like so cool. I love him so much. We had a lot of fun at our shoot. We were laughing. I was making hard eyes at Dan because I'm like so obsessed with him because he's such a sweetie. And I'm gonna leave this in the edit because I love him, you guys. Yeah, you guys need to meet him. He's like my angel. My boyfriend's obsessed with him. Like we have conversations about this man, like whatever. Speaking of not gossiping about people, Dan is one of the nicest, most genuine people in the industry that I've ever met. He is like a light of God. He's really a genuine person, a very talented photographer, and he doesn't have an ego whatsoever. If you guys ever have the fortune of meeting him in person, you will want to squeeze his cheeks, and I'm not talking about the ones on his face, his butt cheeks. I'm like sweating from like how much I love him. After I tested with Dan, his girlfriend, let's not even get started on his girlfriend because I love her so much. I remember Pam needed an assistant. So Dan texted me and said, my girlfriend needs an assistant for this one job. Would you be willing to do it? And I'm like, oh my God, because it was like one of my first paid jobs. I was like, what? Like, I was like, yes, of course. And Pam was the makeup artist that I found on Instagram. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get to meet Pam. This is crazy, I'm like the universe. And she's like, I need an assistant for this day. Don't worry, like it's a commercial job. It's gonna be from three o'clock to five in the morning. She said, it's gonna be from three o'clock, 3 p.m. to five in the morning. She goes, don't worry. I told them uh, they can't go over hours. So you're you're gonna leave at five p.m. And I'm thinking, okay, th like this bitch made a typo because she, this isn't like, it, there's no way that this is a, a, a 14 hour job. <laughs> so I go to this job, super excited, super nervous. I never worked really commercial jobs before this. And I met Pam and from that moment, change <laughs> she's watching this like stop embarrassing me please uh we hit it off and and now we're dating no but i really genuinely liked pam she's super down to earth plus she just has that energy of a big sister or a mom she just wants to teach you and that's my next thing that i want to get into is assisting i am so grateful so grateful that I had Pam as a makeup artist to assist. I am so grateful that the universe and, and whoever put Pam and I together because she has been such an amazing teacher and mentor and I'm sure she's watching this video like, please, I'm gonna unsubscribe. She is so sweet and genuinely just nice and just genuinely giving and she does it from her heart. There are a lot of makeup artists that you will assist that are such <laughs> let's be honest. They're so mean and it's it's very intimidating, but Pam has never ever been like that with me. And by the way, if you guys have an ego when you're assisting, it's never gonna work. I don't mind getting anyone's lunch. I don't mind getting anyone's anything. You know, if you guys do have an ego or a problem with, I'm not getting anyone's coffee. I'm not getting anyone's lunch. I've gotten coffee, I've gotten lunch, I've gotten everything. And who gives a shit? It's a, it's a time for me to go smoke my e-cig outside. Honestly, that's how I see it. I have had makeup artists that like to belittle you in front of clients or like to be like, <laughs> hello. If you ever get one of those, which I'm sure you will if you assist, then just bite your tongue. Don't say anything and just do the best you can and get the f out of there when it's done. I'm not saying be abused by anyone, but you will find a lot of egos in this industry. And if you try battling and fighting every single one, you're gonna lose. These are just general things that I don't do as an assistant. And if you wanna do these, then if, uh, you probably won't get called back. <laughs> okay, so rule number one, I'm not even looking at anything, but don't ever try to sell yourself in front of the client. You are there to assist the makeup artist. You are not there to network. You're not there to get your name out. You're not there to give your card out. Does anyone have cards still? I have never gone to a job where I've been like, well, my name's Stephanie Sizer and like it's it's never gonna happen. Don't ever try to promote yourself or don't ever try to put your name out there because it's gonna make you look bad. And I guarantee you that if that makeup artist catches on, we'll never hire you again. For the first time that you're assisting them, just try to act like you're at a job interview because that's basically what it is. My next one is practice on everyone. It's so different doing someone else's makeup as opposed to yourself. I've done the, my makeup the same way since I was like 19 years old, I'm not kidding. Try to practice on all skin tones and please, for the love of God, please fucking have everyone every skin tone in your makeup bag. I get offended when black models have to bring their own foundation because it's not fair to them. Why does this white model have every fucking skin tone? I see it almost every shoot with a black model. Some of them are actually like surprised when I have their skin tone. Like it really pisses me off and makes me sad at the same time. So please be ready for everyone. Be ready for every skin tone. Be ready for 
everything and really work on everyone. The last thing I want to tell you guys is being a makeup artist is hard. It's not a walk in the park. Yes, it can be super glamorous at times. Yes, it can be super fun at times. And, and most times it is. But when you go on a shoot that's eight hours, 10 hours, 18 hours long, it can be so draining. I want to close this off by saying it's super easy to doubt yourself in this industry. It's super easy to doubt yourself in any freelance, any creative industry at all. But you just have to keep going because being a makeup artist, like I said, it's hard work, but it's not impossible. It is exhausting. You know, you deal with so many personalities. You deal with so many egos. You deal with so many assholes sometimes. But then there are those people that, that you click with and you have like a little tribe with. I don't know. I think it's a cool community to be in because it's just working with a bunch of people that follow their dream. There's going to be times where you want to move back home. There were a lot of times where I wanted to move back to Gurney. I know there were a lot of times where I wanted to quit doing makeup, where I wanted to maybe start doing hair. <laughs> No, I shouldn't. There were a lot of times where I wanted to go back to school or I wanted to do this or that or whatever, but you just have to f***ing keep going. At the end of the day, you are what keeps you from your dreams. You are what keeps you locked down and tied into that boring ass job that you have. I understand there are financial issues. I understand that you guys have kids to take care of or bills to pay. You are the only one standing in your way. You know, looking back, I didn't realize how much work it was gonna be when I first started becoming a makeup artist. I've only been doing makeup here in Mexico for almost four years. Looking back, it has been a lot more work than I anticipated, but it's also been way more rewarding. My number one thing about dreams are if you're consistent and you work hard, anything's gonna happen and it's gonna happen. I hate when people say, well, maybe this dream isn't for you because who the f are you to tell me what dream is for me? Who am I to tell you what dream is good for you? If you work hard and you are consistent and you truly believe in yourself, and everything's gonna work out. I think that's it, that's all I can tell you guys. If you wanna be a makeup artist and you guys have any more questions, please let me know. Um, I think I described my journey pretty well. If I missed anything, well then, that will forever be a secret. I hope you guys like this video. Please like and subscribe, because it helps me out. And if you guys have any doubts, any questions, then please let me know. It's 2020, we got this, let's go. All right, love you guys, see ya, bye.